Hey, it's Jason with Incredibly Useful Exercises Volume 7, Lower Fingerboard Mastery Part 4. So we've been doing this for the past four of these videos in the past four weeks for me. I'm going through one a week. Uh, hopefully this will go well. We got a puppy uh, last week named William. He, we're crate training him right now. So uh, he hasn't, he's been great so far, but he hasn't heard a lot of bass playing and me talking. So we'll see how this goes. Try not to edit. Hopefully I won't have to edit. And so uh, if you haven't checked out these other videos in the series, they are all uh, on my YouTube channel. And at some point I will pull all of these together and do some sort of what have I learned. Oh, one more thing before we get started, we're experiencing a heat wave here in San Francisco. So it's been into the 90s, which I know Fahrenheit, 90s. I know that doesn't seem like a big deal for people in other parts of the world, but we don't have air conditioning here in San Francisco. Nobody really does. So I'm sweating like a pig, got the doors closed so I don't bother my neighbors. So hopefully, and I new puppy, so um, I haven't been spending a lot of time on bass, but I have practiced these through a bit. I'll remember to take my practice practice mute off, got my practice at Modacity. Before we get started, let's just look at what we're gonna do here. And I will do uh, uh, timestamps so you can skip between all these things. Uh, that way uh, you can see what you haven't seen and just kind of navigate through. So we've got affirmations, which I'm not going to do because I'm using the Kindle app and I just can't write on it, but I would absolutely be writing affirmations in here. Uh, affirmations, five positive statements that remind you of the value of music. All this very zoomed out sort of stuff is something that Dennis does really wonderfully in this series. And just he frames your practicing to make it a little more meaningful. That's sort of the gist of it, I think. So um, we got affirmations, which won't happen on this, but then silence. I did just do 30 seconds of silence. Centering, long tones, breathing scales, Professor Paul's, it's Paul Ellison, Paul's double stop exercise, string crossings, oompa with primer. I think I've done almost all of these, maybe not Professor. Or Paul's Max's Magic. I think this is the first time for this. Vomits lower octave, silence, and we close it out. Uh, we've got this all, and, and in all of these volumes, he's got some just just info about just in general good advice. So these are approximately one hour. This will probably be clocking in at about an hour. And we will see. So we will get this going. This, by the way, uh, is Modacity, my practice app of choice. I have these exercises built out in a playlist. And I guess 47 minutes and 30 seconds is what I've given myself. We'll see how, uh, how that goes. Uh, I usually don't talk through these. I usually just practice in silence. So um, that's been what it's been for, for me. And yeah, it, this is a great app just for navigating through. Link in the description if you wanna check out more on that. Tune Rosin gets set. I boot up my favorite tuning app, Tonal Energy. Love this app. Give my bass a quick tune. Okay, that's sounding pretty good. I might have kind of a throaty sound today. Uh, I recommend not touching your bow hair, but I don't have a comb nearby. Um, it's so dang hot and humid that um, my, uh, my, my rosin's just being a little funky, especially when I start. That's one of the reasons why I'm glad I've gone down to the lower hydration. This is the 40% Leatherwood Bespoke Rosin. I have a link to that in the description also. I'm thinking if this heat wave continues, I might I might go down to the 30% uh, and uh, or, or even the 20% uh, because I'm kind of scared of my rosin right now. Of putting it on. This is generally how I tune. Um, I play all open strings. I used to always tune with harmonics and then I would go on gigs and everybody would have an electronic tuner out. And so if there was ever any issue in the bass section, I uh, it would be easy to look at me because I was trying to tune just by ear. So I use that now. I certainly can tune by ear, but I guess that's just what what I've been doing. Okay, we're gonna go ahead. Uh, Modacity has you rate everything. Some of these I don't really pay attention because I don't know how well or not well my tuning goes. But I do try to use these ratings because I can sort through different items and prioritize what's going well and what's not. Another benefit of this awesome app from Mark Gelfo. Okay, so next up, silence.
I realize it's weird to listen to somebody breathing on something like this. I'm just trying to no filter, uh, no edits, just go through uh, what a day in of, of practicing or an hour of practicing looks like for me, except subtract all my talking. And then you'd have that idea. When I'm doing the, si the breathing for silence, I try to breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth. And I just think about lengthening. I feel like someone's got my body. I'm like a marionette and someone's got a string attached to my head. And I'm just trying to feel nice and tall uh, to start. And then as we've done with so many of these, again, Again, I don't, I, maybe I should rate my silence, but I kind of ignore it. Um, but I don't, I usually do pay attention to these. So next up is centering. We've, we've done this a lot. It's just going through every body part. And just so I don't interrupt the exercise, I'll show you what I do, well, what Dennis has, which I also do. So I'm just playing a note, could be anything, could be open strings. The G major scale is what he lays this over, but it's just a device, I believe, just to give you something to do on the bass. Um, but we're just focusing on, individual body parts and then connecting everything. So again, feet, knees, hips, and then I, you could then take a, a, a purposeful breath. For me, I just sort of bring my attention to my breath, which seems to be working for me. So I'm not interrupting my breathing for this. I'm just checking in and doing that. Then lower back, shoulder blades, and uh, again, bring your attention to your breath, neck, face. And as I, I bring my attention to these body parts, I just, uh, try to release whatever I feel there. I try to release. And I often notice how much tension I am holding. I can be a fairly tense, anxious person like, and the pandemic certainly doesn't help with that. Um, so this exercise has been good for me for many reasons. So then uh, we go uh, from the right shoulder all the way down to the extremities of the right arm. We start with shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers, send your breath. Same thing for the left side, shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers, send your breath. Body, just holistic here, body, arms, breathe. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Think about my feet. Bring the attention to my knees. Always feel my connection with the floor. Hips. Focus on my breath. Connect with my lower back. My shoulder blades. breath. Now going down the right arm, shoulder, elbow, awareness, wrist, fingers, center with my breath, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left fingers. You can move the body part if that helps. Center the breath, body, arms. I can always take more bows if I want. If I want to really connect with that body part, I'll hang out on arms for a second. And breath. And so for me, just like some of the the joys, but also stresses of, of adopting a little rescue guy, uh, I'm feeling a lot of held tension that I didn't even realize over the weekend. My goodness. So I was really having to focus to get that trapezius and the uh, neck uh, loose. So I'm going to be focusing on that body part as uh, that body region as I go. Okay, long tones. Uh, these are great. We'll see how they go with my, uh, I'm not gonna make excuses, but this weird stickiness of the conditions here. Again, uh, super quick talk through. Uh, Dennis, by the way, has videos for most of these and eventually all of these on his YouTube channel, which is linked in the description below. Um, so I'm just, uh, he, he does a much better description of, of me than these. This is just me kind of rocking the exercises in sequence. Okay. So we have the metronome on a hundred and it's groups of two. It's like, um, it's like when I get on, used to get on the treadmill back when we were allowed to go to gyms, uh, I would oftentimes take the level or the incline. I go, I go from like level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I go down by twos. And that's essentially what Dennis is doing for long tones. So you're, you can kind of ignore the time signature because it's just a way to show how many beats are being grouped together. So it starts with uh, two beats per bow. So I'm just thinking one, two, one, two. That's the only one where I'm feeling like I'm moving a little fast. Uh, with all the other parameters of Boeing. Then we do threes, fours, uh, then sixes, eights, tens. So 10, we would have, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then do it again. Uh, at a certain point, yeah, at the tens, he just has you do one down bow and one up bow just so you're not on that forever. Then 12s, 14s, then he goes to 8-4. That just really is a way of indicating 16s, 18s, 20s. So here you are in 20s. Then he's going to downshift you. So from 20 counts per bow, you're going down to 16, 12, 8, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, hold. Hopefully that quasi makes sense with my uh, treadmill analogy. It's like slowly uh, increase the challenge and then kind of like uh, let, let the challenge s subside faster on the way down. I don't know if that makes sense. Here we go. And uh, in sticky weather like this, I usually keep my left hand at the ready and if my bow sticks, I can sometimes give the like, if that happens, a little pluck with the left hand, we'll get it going again. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. Threes. Fours. Sixes. One, two, three, four. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, eights, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thinking big muscles. Two, three, four, five, six. I feel like an aerobics instructor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Feeling my back work. Seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Getting dehydrated. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, challenge is getting greater, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's halfway, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yikes! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're downshifting. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, I'm going to skip the report, repeats just so you get the idea, 4s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 3s, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2s, and maybe not the whole bow for me, for the, that's the idea. I generally, I, I kind of overbow if I try to use the whole bow for the quarters, although it's probably a good exercise to do. So great, I need a drink of water and I hope I don't disturb our cute little addition to the family. So I'm just going to be very chill. Come over here. 
the place is chaos because we're potty training. Oh, move this water closer. Okay. So that's long tones. And Dennis describes that very eloquently in his video for this. Uh, I just summarize that it's a great awareness exercise and control exercise. And the more you can think about big muscle groups, the better. Uh, four stars is probably good. I basically got through that, capped a little, but um, that's the general idea. Really feeling all the stress of the weekend up in my neck. So I, when, what I do is I try to just... Again, center, which Dennis has written throughout here, and really just kind of bring my attention to lengthening, feeling as, as tall as possible, feeling my connection to the floor. Okay, uh, thumbs up. Next, breathing scales. These are cool. Um, I sometimes feel like I'm gonna pass out when I do these, and especially on this hot day, I'm not that I'm wimping out, or but it would be okay if I wimped out, but I may not try to go through uh, the entire thing just because what I described, but the idea, and I've done these at least once before, uh, is exhale on the down bow. So you're here and you just think, <sighs> I go through the mouth, exhale, inhale on the up bow, and I inhale with the nose, exhale, inhale. And I almost feel like I'm making a little bit of an oval. I, do, I, 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 I wouldn't necessarily think too much about this if I, or if I was new to the base, because I think when I describe this to people, they start to overdo it. But I'm almost feeling like there's a little bit, like if I was in the water uh, in, a, in a pool and I was moving my arm, there'd just be a little bit of elliptical motion. Hopefully the GoPro is catching this. So I'm not just dirt, dirt, dirt. I'm getting a little bit of what uh, David Allen Moore calls... Uh, Oh dear, Jason Heath. Uh, graceful gestures, something like the elegant gestures, I believe. Sorry, I'll chalk it up to the heat. Then um, you go through and you do different groupings. So maybe I'll do that today because I think I've done that one before. So then we can do half notes. Uh, so that would just be exhale. <sighs> I'm going to try that. So I'm going to do half notes. You can do a metronome, but I actually don't do, I actually, I remember thinking about this and Dennis actually says, don't do a metronome. Let your body uh, kind of determine the tempo. That is smart. Um, that's probably why I'm getting lightheaded actually. Smart, Dennis. Okay. I got to remember that. So no metronome. I'm just going to uh, let it rock. And I'm, I'm, I, I sometimes I'm trying to focus on what the exercise is about. So I had, I just had the urge now to turn on a drone tuner to check my intonation. I'm just going to focus on the breath right now and the larger motions. So this is half notes, exhaling the down bow. going to point one thing out. Dennis does have you go up to the high G, but we are doing lower fingerboard mastery. So I would feel fine. And I would feel fine with all these exercises to modify them. Um, if you like, so maybe, you know, this is great for someone who's maybe not really getting up above the G. So if you're in that camp, you might, we get to that note. We do E, uh, I believe E F is a down bow. Yes. Yeah, so we go, go to E F sharp up bow and then back down. So exhale. Inhale. And so on and so forth. So just because it says do X, feel free to modify and tailor and again, if I not do it, do what you do. Um, but but feel free to if you better, I've said this many times through these these uh head, head uh, GoPro videos, uh better to do something well that's simpler than to try to struggle and not really get the point and make it more complicated. So that's a long way of saying if you're not rocking the thumb position and you might not be if you're doing lower octave at this point, just don't go up there. Okay, uh, that was okay, actually. Maybe it's the heat, but I'm gonna give myself three and a half stars. A little more positive. These are cool. I don't think I've done these yet. These are, okay, so the point to learn barred perfect fourths with the first, second, and fourth fingers. The, the control and then also power and endurance are kind of up there for this. Uh, expression, there is none. Velocity, there is none. That is very true. Um, so these exercises, uh, as with other double stop exercises in these volumes, Dennis recommends doing 
pizzicato, and that's great because pizzicato reveals a lot. It's kind of like when, a, and the same is true for the bow in a different way. When a lot of jazz focused players uh, use the bow to kind of be a magnifying glass on their pitch. And I think a lot of classically oriented players, though these work for whatever style, doesn't matter, um, will use pizzicato to hear little imperfections in what they're doing in the left hand that come through more clearly in pizzicato. So like this. If you're not really barred, perfectly, you're, you're not going to get them both ringing or you're going to get that kind of a buzz. So you want to make sure these are down. And my experience with these is that these do require strength and they're building strength and just be, be easy on yourself. That might be plenty. And I would also think of these as a little bit more in the intermediate camp. If you're, if you're working to really get a square left hand position just on one string, maybe hold off on these um, because they do require a little bit of a, mo not that much of a modification, but like, you see, I'm laying my fourth finger flat, but because my fourth finger is a little, a wimpy little finger, I'm helping it with third. So I'm actually using a fair amount of just strength. You got to get flat to do these bars. And these are going between uh, full bars and that, well, I'll show you. So, so the first one, four, four, then we do four, two, four. The first number is referring to the lower string. So see, I went from fully barred to I had to make an, an adjustment. I'm here. Now next, four, one, so four for the low note. So I gotta get two out of there. So again, those first three bars are, and that might be plenty. That's sort of my mantra for these. Um, the, and, and, if, and if you want, one of my favorite techniques for practicing new material of any sort, but especially, well, new anything really, this, but it works well for this is to repeat it multiple times. I like doing four times on a note. It gets me more at bats, um, referring to baseball if you're not in the US, but uh, the gives me more chances to succeed or give it another shot. Then I might do threes. Then you get it twos, ones, and and the so the whole pattern. I will actually play the whole pattern now. Is um, and so that last those last three bars are really cool. There, power chord one and four. So you got to keep these out of the way. Then two bar, one bar, and you'll be amazed. Like my first finger tends to kind of this would maybe be a little more of the default position. So I actually have to like move my hand this way a little. Fourth finger the same way. My fourth finger might bow this way a little bit. So I have to kind of tweak, tweak the sides of that, of that hand frame to make this work. Then he just goes down half steps. So then the next line, it's the same thing, same fingering. You can look at the notes, but if once you get the pattern, go down and so on and so forth. And then before I run out of time here, I'll take the bow. My dog is being so good. He's just chilling. Okay, so then the same thing and sustain. And I'm not in love with that intonation, but um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to not be too hard on myself today. The, uh, I believe, yeah, so Dennis does say, Make the strings go fat. Don't bend the string with the bow. Uh, let him describe that. Uh, if he hasn't put out a video on this, he will. But make the strings go fat is the line I was looking for. So as I'm playing these, geez. Anyway, uh, that's a pretty uh, D, D or D minus uh, perfect fourth, but you can see, I noticed it was out of tune. I was like struggling. So I, um, you can check if you're not sure, especially for a lot of these. They have harmonics. They might not be the same notes you're trying to play, but they're still useful to check also. There. So anyway, the, the fourth one, I think, 
one. Yeah, it's the one I'm struggling with the most, partially because I'm just not really strong right here. So I have to use the third finger to help it out. It's a great exercise. I will tell you, because I had a weekend of not really playing bass, I'm actually feeling pretty fatigued just from doing that tiny little bit. So I'm gonna monitor myself, monitor myself and make sure I don't overdo it. And uh, that might be good advice if you're new to these or you're feeling similar, you know, twinges and tweaks. String crossing is I gave myself a ton of time because it actually takes this amount of time to go through what he's got laid out. I'm probably not going to play through, I'm de I am not going to play through the whole thing now because this would be like 30 minutes of me describing and playing. But these remind me so much of, so they're inspired from Edward Nanny's book, the, the, his method, one of his method book volumes. Uh, my teacher from the Chicago Symphony who taught at Northwestern where Dennis Whitaker incidentally also went to school, he studied with Jeff Bradditch, I studied with Michael Hovnanian, and one of my very first bass lessons back in the early 90s with Michael was a very his version of, of this kind of thing. Very, very useful. So what what these exercises are, I don't even I don't even think I've this might be the first time I've done these on this series. Um, they're a series of exercises done on two strings and then three strings and a, and a variety of different uh, string crossing patterns. And he, Dennis recommends that you do them in different parts of the bow. And it's very cool. So he's giving you something to do in the left hand, but it's really my interpretation, at least, is it's just to give you some variety in the left hand. So playing through this, the pattern is, I'll just play A1, is like a... <laughs> so you can see my left hand better. Hopefully you can see that. I don't have it tot, tot, tot. Oh, no, it's okay. It's, uh, I don't have that totally memorized yet, so we're working on it. But, um, so then we do the same thing. Uh, it, so we start at the frog and we do down bow at the frog. So you're gonna do it right here. do it again, but you're going to do it down bow in the middle. So now we move and we go right here. Then down bow at the tip. And then the same thing starting up bow at the tip. And right after we get done with this, he's going out for a walk, so. And then up bow at the middle. Then up bow at the frog. And so that's the idea. And then the other patterns, which I'll just demonstrate without um, going through all those permutations, but it's the same idea. Just do, do it here, down bow, here, down bow, here, down bow, here, up bow, here, up bow, here, up bow. You're teaching, you're just giving, uh, you're, you're sharpening your focus on what every individual part of the bow can do, which is pretty cool. So B1 uh, is this pattern. <laughs> flips it back around. So that's the idea with that. B2 is the same thing, just on the lower three strings. And then C1, uh, just a permutation. These are in three, four now. So you're gonna go. And you get the idea with that. C2 is the same thing, just starting on the E string. And what I am focusing on in this or any exercise like this is uh, the cleanest 
possible string crossing that I can do. I'm really trying to sound like I've programmed it into the computer. Uh, I'm also trying to focus on using the least amount of motion possible. So I don't want to be like moving anything I don't need to move. And then I don't have a great way of describing this, but I kind of want to make sure that I am, I am, I am letting my natural arm weight, whatever that means to you. To me, it just means like thinking it as big muscle as possible, you know, being as, as close to just having my arm by my side as possible. I'm trying to keep as much of that into the string as, as I, as I can, no matter where I am in the bow. One last thing about these before we move on, you will this recovery, uh, French bow players will generate a muscle burn in the right thumb muscles between the thumb and the first finger. This is normal, especially when playing at the tip. That is true. Don't play past a comfortable fatigue. I would also emphasize that. Um, if your thumb begins to hurt, move the bow back to the frog, releasing the grip of the thumb on the bow and finish the exercise slowly, learning how to release the thumb support while below the balance point. So again, these are, um, how would I summarize that? These are exercises that have a lot of benefit to anybody, even in their first few months on the base, I think. I think as soon as you get are comfortable moving between a couple positions, this would be a great, this is something that is a, a key point of struggle for many students I've worked with, particularly uh, adults picking up the bass and trying to understand, but you know, young uh, people of all ages really. <laughs> Understanding, I think that the understanding of the what it takes to to get a, a a sound or a variety of sounds that work, I think that that uh, I wouldn't say it comes quickly, but it comes much more quickly than how you can transfer that over between two strings without any garbage in the sound and while keeping a very similar sound. You know. Uh, the, the great former bass professor at Indiana University, Lawrence Hurst, I'll tell this story, then I'll shut up and move on. Um, he used to talk about the way that you would really ideally want this, the range of string instruments to sound, from bass to cello to viola to violin. You would want, you would want to be able to start on the lowest note of the bass, which would really be down here, but I'll just say this. And, And whenever the cello took over, you would really want that string sound to kind of continue up into the upper register. The same quality of characteristics, a warm sound with enough focus, but body. And you know, th th that sort of uh, philosophy I think is good just for the, the bass in general. So like, I want the same type of sound to be available to me on that note, that note, that note, that note, that note. So the register changes, the, the frequency of the note changes, but the, the, the textural characteristics of the notes ha are similar. They still have body. So what I hear a lot with people, they'll go like. So what am I doing? I'm not getting uh, that transferred into the D string. So then somebody will try to make a modification and they'll go. And so now there's a little more consistency in the sound, but there's garbage. And so a great way to start is just two again and two again and. And for this time, right around the balance point, something like that, just getting this basic motion going, then maybe trying the first bar, even just G, A, B. Because that right there, you need to be comfortable doing that shift uh, to really get through this exercise. Again, great exercise, great for er people early on in the bass. Um, but yeah, and maybe you want to modify it to get maximum benefit like I was talking about. It does take around 11 minutes. Maybe it's taking me, I should really up that to maybe like 14 because I need a little recovery time between these. So I did my math wrong on that one for my personal practice. Oompa, I'm just lumping them all into Oompa Primer and Oompa and we'll just see how these go. These would definitely be more of a, um, definitely more of an in, I wouldn't do this my first, month on the base or maybe not even my first year on the base, frankly, but it's, it, this is, I use this technique all the time in orchestral playing and solo playing. So it's very, very, very useful. So I did this last video, so I'll just kind of move quickly through this. You can check out more detailed description, but.
Wait, I, did I biff that? I think I screwed that up. I did. Sorry. That's essentially A with a screw up from me. Um, my hand, I talked about this in the last video, I keep this kind of an orientation to my hand, a little bit of a, almost like the way I'm in thumb position, just down here. And then this is just a good way to develop skills you really need for lower position playing, but are not necessarily, I haven't, this is a great way to, to teach this. This comes, as Dennis talks about, from a Samandel etude, um, but this, uh, I, I enjoy the way that this is laid out. It's very cool. Uh, so, uh, I'm doing B1, by the way, so. So we're doing this fork. You can see I got one. And I, I'm going to release one from, from the E. I could technically get, I mean, this is not, I wouldn't want to be in this position for days, but uh, I could, I, I, you know, in, in for a rapid motion, for a, a moderate amount of time like this, that, that fork motion is really useful. But see, I'm, I'm going to let my one go. Even if I keep it on the string, which I guess as I analyze what I'm doing, I am keeping it more or less on the string, but it's very, it's very unengaged. And part of that is it has to get to this note. So we got to go E, E, F sharp, E, uh, <laughs> Jason, G sharp, sorry, I'm losing my brain here. Then three, another fork. I'm sorry. And then actually I, I misspoke last week. Actually, this is amazing the way that Dennis, I didn't say it wasn't great, but I, I think I was going back and stopping on E. I actually really love the way this is set up because you stop on this high E. What I meant is I would, I was kind of like doing this and then ending with this E again, then doing the next pattern. This is actually really cool to hold here because then you just go into the next pattern and it gives your brain a, a chance to like think about the next pattern and so on and so forth. And then when you actually get into umpas which have a flow to them, uh, doing that, what I call a thinking pause, which Dennis has here, and also he has center. That's a really good way to just sort of give yourself a chance to think through this. So I'll do B1, uh, part one, one more time. And then the next one is similar or same, almost, well, just a different pattern. Then uh, B2. Now this is the one where you're going to have to uh, lift the fourth finger up to be able to play that second finger right there. So B2, hopefully you can see this angle. I don't have this totally memorized. So. Oh, sorry, intonation. This exercise hugely benefits from having, uh, oh, I haven't practiced it with a drone because nothing's set, but having a, an E drone or even a B drone, I'd probably do a B drone. I'm not gonna leave that going because I don't know if my dog likes drones yet. Probably doesn't, <laughs> so we'll see. And then B3 is kind of, kind of, uh, well, it's not kind of, it's a descending sort of variant. So it's like. So that is oompa broken down in a great way to practice. So I would just hang out on that, get comfortable with that before applying it into uh, oompa proper, which starts with, the, it's just it's just what you did, although um, uh, just, just not with the thinking pauses and starting on this B right here. So you go, uh, I guess I'll play a little bit of it. Yeah, that was right. Good, and don't do that. I don't know why I'm doing it that fast. <laughs> do it much slower and with intent. Don't just crank through it. Um, yeah, that's oompa. That's an idea of oompa. So I'm going to move on for right now. That's going okay. Max's magic is uh, one of my all-time 
most used exercises, the max being referred to in here, Max Dimoff, principal bass of the Cleveland Orchestra. I've gotten the chance to work on many projects and be at many events with him over the years. Just a great person, really super cool, interesting uh, uh, artist, player. And I've interviewed him for the podcast uh, before. He's been on uh, several things, things I've done. Uh, so yeah, love Max. So this exercise, which I think Max credits uh, Ring Warner is the name of the bassist. I think Max used to call this Rings thing, and he must have demonstrated it to so many people that it ended up being called Max's Magic. I am talking far too long. Let me show you the pattern, which is simple but beautiful. So it is one, two, four, two, one, four, two, four. Okay, so. And I often, this exercise is cool because it starts on the low F and just goes up to this neck block position right here. Um, I learned it on the G string. And then the idea is I would just go up chromatically. So it'd be like. And the cool thing with this exercise is it's a pronation. exercise, but with uh, finger variants. You go, right? And then, so it's like two different motions, uh, really good for tr just training your arm uh, to kind of do fundamental motions. So the way I learned it was just go up a string and go up every half step. What I found with people that are new to this exercise is that the pattern itself uh, comes relatively quickly. Don't don't worry about going fast. And you can also do separate bows. The thing that I see people running into problems with is being in tune as they go up. So it's really good to uh, check in, trust but verify <laughs> as you go up. Uh, so that I would go up. Check that A. You can also check that that uh, B. And what the heck am I doing? Yeah, maybe don't use that one since I can't. I'm not a good example, but then B flat. There's a G or a D under that note that I'm apparently not hitting well today. So anyway, I'm sort of uh, uh, rambling, but the using the harmonics or open strings to check is a great way to do this. Um, the way Max has this is super cool. It's just, he just tells you when to, or the way Dennis has this exercise laid out is super cool. He just tells you when to go to the new string. So you go up the E string and you, just like this, you go, um, So I'm on A right there. Now I go to the A string. So down here. And again, I'm not. I give myself a D minus, D at best for intonation. And that's the idea with this exercise. Uh, if you're starting out with this, again, separate bows is a great way to do it. Maybe consider starting on the G string just because there's less mass to move. And then something I'm, I would wanna keep working, or, or I'm constantly working on is how clear I can be. So I, a, better w a better way to have demonstrated that, uh, but I'll blame it on the heat is. is just thinking about um, really having good finger articulation. Okay, good, vomits are up next. Uh, that was okay. Vomits lower octave. So we've done vomits before. You can watch uh, previous videos or Dennis if he has it out or he will if he doesn't yet. Uh, these Gary Carr's famous exercises, they are great for all sorts of things except velocity so much. Um, but yeah, they're really good training exercises. Um, you can practice them with a drone if you like. This lower octave is cool because it stops on the G harmonic. So uh, the idea 
here is to do every possible finger combination. So one for the low note, one for the high note, one for the low note, one for two for the high note, one for the low note, three for the high note, one for the low note, four for the high note, and then two for the low note, and then the same, same third and fourth. That's why starting on B flat is cool because you can do it with fourth finger also. So the way this would look is, and my fingerboard is getting a little bit sticky, so I'm gonna wipe it down before I scooch around. And we go like this. Feel free to repeat these. And think when you're starting out, slower is better. And so yeah, again, repeating each one is totally cool. And then the same thing, one to two. Same thing, one, three, one, four, great exercise. One of these that I need to add back into my daily dozen, um, I've sort of forgotten that it's a good idea to practice these. I don't know why, because I'm just, that's uh, my nature. Um, but as I've been doing these through this series, I've been realizing, oh yeah, it really does again, just sort of sharpen my aim. It's like practicing, practicing archery or whatever and just getting better at like really targeting those notes, thinking about what I need to do with my body to get to those notes. So super cool exercise. And we'll wrap up today's session with silence and then take the dog for a walk. All right, so that <laughs> this project, uh, we're not even halfway uh, through with these, which is which is crazy. Um, but I hope you're enjoying these. Uh, I, I'd be practicing this anyway, so this is just a look inside my practice session, trying to not edit these as much as possible. I was a little worried that that my little guy there was gonna uh, freak out at the sound of my voice. Uh, so we'll see. He hasn't learned the word walk yet, so I'll probably have to use coded language soon. Uh, that is it for the lower octave mastery, I think think. Um, I believe we're going up. Uh, I'll look at that later. Uh, well, you'll, you'll find out next week. Um, but these are great exercises. It's linked below if you want to get this individual volume. Definitely follow Dennis's channel in general. That app that I like to use, Modacity, is linked up. Uh, anything I talk about is linked up. And yeah, we'll see you soon. You want to go out for a walk? You want to go out for a walk, buddy? Is it walk time? It's walk time.